company in Sweden called the Engage Group, where I am a senior technical specialist or uh, architect or something like that. And um, I uh, usually work a lot with with um, the uh, the outside of of uh, FNO. So I'm not working that much within FNO and, and so on. But today we're going to talk about Dataverse and your right and how it will affect us in the FNO world. So first of all, we will look a bit a very short bit about what what is dual right uh, most of you hopefully already know that but we will have a quick look then we will have to we will look at a bit about how dual right relates to finance and supply chain because it's a new it's a fairly new concept to us and it works f at, at least as i understand it completely different from what we are used to in in especially from ax but also from fno we will look a bit about um, the setup and then we will uh, have a look at how, <coughs> sorry, how um, what we've learned, and a bit about the future. So first of all, what is dual right? Dual right is a synchronous integration between the two different Dynamics uh, main application suites. So finance and supply chain on the on one side, and CRM sales. Um, field service on the other side. So it's basically an integration between FNO and Dataverse because it syncs data to, to different tables and so on. Yes. It's um, synchronous, as I said before, which means that when we do a change on one end, it also changes on the other end. That creates a couple of challenges because that uh, gives us the downside of not being able to do the change on one application if it's not accepted on the other. On the other hand, that's good because we won't have corrupted data. So that's good. <coughs> it's also bidirectional, meaning that um, if we do is we, we can do a change on either platform and it will um, synchronize over to the other one, of course. Um, there are two different sync modes here. The first one is initial sync. So initial sync takes all of the data in one platform and copies it over to the other one just to prep data. <laughs> that is usually used when we start the sync. If we have large amounts of data, then uh, we should probably avoid initial sync. We should probably do what Microsoft calls a um, bootstrapping instead, meaning that we actually migrate the same data in to the two different platforms and then we start the synchronization uh, start start to write without doing the initial sync meaning that <laughs> we assume that we have the same data on both sides and um, the thing is that and we'll come to that li later these two modes works completely differently so initial sync doesn't at all do the same thing as the incremental things that is then used when we are in in production mode. Uh, we can set up customizable mappings. There are a whole slew of mappings that are already available from Microsoft. So standard entities are already uh, mapped in the different um, functional areas of FNO, so to speak. So you have supply chain, you have HR, you have um, um uh, finance um, but you also have a special one called global address book um, global address book actually tries to duplicate the functionality that we have in fno for you for for global address book in ce and try to take the same concepts over um, in some cases it's optional in some cases uh, it's it's mandatory so you will have to look in look into that what we can also do is that, that we can filter and transform meaning that if we have a drop down list in fno that we have three different um, uh, areas of something that we can choose and those three different areas aren't the same on the ce side we can actually transform the value between those so say that we choose between one, two, and three on FNO, but on the CE side, it needs to be A, B, or C. 
And then we can have a transform rule that gives us the option to, um, to transform that over in both directions. Uh, sorry, I we have pollen in Sweden, so I'm a bit off today. Um, we also have complete end-to-end -end scenarios, so we can actually set up a complete prospect to cash scenario in dual write, meaning that we have syncs from FNO to CE, from CE to FNO, and back and forth in multiple steps, implementing an entire business process uh, in, in this case, which gives, gives us the options to, to, uh, to set up the complete business process, but it also give, gives us sort of a, a reason to choose to adhere to Microsoft standard business processes if they're already implemented. All right, <clears throat> so why should we then use dual write? A lot of it is out of the box. That's not saying that it's just uh, like next, 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 finish solution. It is fairly complex to set up, especially since we have data in both platforms that doesn't necessarily match each other. So we will have to uh, get around some of these data quality issues. Uh, but it is otherwise uh, an out of the box solution. So much of it is already created, much of it is already set up. Um, it is a connection to Dataverse. Um, as you know, when we <laughs> when we create an FNO environment, a lot of the new add-ons and things requires Dataverse. So we will still need Dataverse anyway. And if we have CE, that makes it even more important to do a robust synchronous um, uh, setup between the two environments. Um, it is already Power Platform enabled, meaning that we can use dual write not only for syncing data between FNO and CE, we can also use it for syncing data and provide data to, to Power Platform applications since it's Dataverse. <laughs> this means that we can do uh, uh, choose a low code, no code approach when we develop new applications. So if we have users that don't necessarily need to be in FNO or in CE or field service, but they just need to do one single simple thing, we can actually give them access to that through a very dedicated Power Platform application with the same data and all of the business logic rules and so on. Um, the the dual write has, has resilience, which means that if one of the environments, one of the systems is down for maintenance, for instance, it will queue up the, the um, synchronization uh, operations and it will run them once both of the environments are available again. So just because we do a deploy to finance and supply chain, for instance, doesn't mean that we will lose uh, we will lose transactions. It will they will be queued. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as I said before, a lot of it is pre-made. There are already synchronization uh, patterns for for different entities, uh, mappings, and so on, which you don't have to create, but you can customize them if you have added fields or so to, to the to the standard entities. You can also create completely custom mappings, of course. And the most important one is that it, this is Microsoft's method <coughs> method of choice, meaning that this is the one solution that Microsoft at the moment is mainly supporting. So we are not on our own. If it doesn't work, we can add a support issue and Microsoft will have to look into it and figure out why it doesn't work because it's still their solution. So being able to shift uh, some of the, um, some of the um, reason for, for um, uh, maintaining the solution over to Microsoft is, is a good thing because otherwise we will have to do everything by ourselves. So <laughs> how does this um, 
look from a FNO perspective. So when we set up a new FNO environment, we will get a new Dataverse environment. It's an empty one. There is nothing in it uh, except for a couple of <coughs> except for a couple of basic solutions where we use that we can use for for um, and you're right. If we already have a CE environment, then of course this is not the one the environment that we should connect to the, the one that is defaultly set up. We should of course connect to our CMM environment, which is a bit scary because it it requires us to install some solutions into um, into that CRM environment. So it has to be part of the dependencies all the way up from dev up to production on the CRM side. Uh, <clears throat> but that's usually just um, something that needs to be there. Um, <laughs> so the environment is created regardless. We can then choose to link. <coughs> we can then choose to link that environment if we want to. If we don't want to, we should of course link the CRM one in instead. And I think normally we don't want to link the default environment. Uh, just be careful that if you do link an environment, there is no reverting it. There is no official way for Microsoft uh, to do this. You can create a support case. And if you have a case strong enough, they will help you to unlink and relink the environment. But that will create some, <laughs> some things that you will need to handle, especially if you have already started using the uh, the dataverse environment for for like planning optimization or or any of the other add-ins. <clears throat> um, so before you do the linking, you need to really think about which environment are we going to link. There are also other dependencies, except for the the uh, <laughs> microservice add-ins, and those are like data events and business events. Uh, for you who are working with developing for FNO, you know that um, FNO and AX in the history isn't really like a, a event driven system. <laughs> it's a system that requires batch jobs and that requires um, things to run on a regular basis in order for anything to happen. Um, but if you look at what data events is, data events is something that is triggered when a specific operation is happening. And um, that's not really how, uh, how FNO works. So what Microsoft did was that they used event logic and, uh, and um, uh, events in, in Dataverse to help uh, AX and FNO implement these uh, things. <laughs> so, um, the setup then, the initial setup, um, when you set up a new environment, uh, as I said before, there is, a, there is an environment provisioned. You shouldn't use that one because that's normally not the correct one. Especially if you have an NCRM already, you should probably use that one instead. When you set it up, <laughs> uh, you, you get to choose uh, the standard solutions that are being deployed. Or you choose, as I, you see here on screen, a different Power Platform environment, and then you can point to your CRM in, instead. <laughs> um, <coughs> so in LCS, we um, use an existing CRM environment. Uh, note that when you do this, you need to be in the correct tenant. If you're a consultant working with customers and using your own consultant firm's tenant, Azure tenant, you will have an issue doing this because you need to be in the correct Azure tenant in order to link environments with Power Platform. Um, so 
ask the customer to get um, to get an account for for the specific tenant in this case. Uh, you need to have permissions on Power Platform, uh, and you need to have at least a basic license in Power Platform to do this. What I recommend is to use the default admin account that you have already used to set up your FNO environments, because that one is already in the correct tenant. It already has some basic uh, access uh, and licenses, so you should be able to use that one fine. Also, when you set this up, there are some data flows created on the Dataverse side, which means that those will be created for that account that you use to set this up. So if you set it up with a temporary account and that person then quits the organization, then you will have eventually have issues when this account doesn't work anymore. So I would use a generic account and I would probably use the one that is the default admin account within uh, finance and supply chain. <clears throat> um, so, um, so <laughs> what what have we then um, mm -hmm. uh, lear learned about um, um, setting this up? So, First of all, when we do set it up and we do the initial sync. Sorry. No, no, not <laughs> just someone, someone saying the background. No, no, it's not. Yeah, yeah, continue, <laughs> please. <laughs> uh, we we can uh, we can use this stop for me to get some tea, and uh, if there is anyone having any any questions. No, I think so far so good. Uh, yeah, again, even FNO is quite new for me. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, dual right FNO, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting yeah, I, topic. Yes, and I, I mean, one of the important parts to understand here is that you usually um, connect dual right with FNO because FNO is the one using dual right the most, but there is also the issue with with understanding that most of the impact is actually on the CE side because there is a lot of tables and entities generated in the on on the dataverse side in order to support what FNO is doing yes. so it's it's actually not a, a special especially FNO technologies it's absolutely the least part is in FNO, but the, so both the technology and the impact is on the CE mm. side in this case, which is important to understand as well. Yes, that's true. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so um, some of the things that we have learned while setting this up is that that um, as I mentioned before, initial sync that we do when we set up each mapping creates a DMF job in FNO, uh, which generates a CSV file, which is then exported and pushed over to the Dataverse side and imported through a, a data job in Dataverse. Um, that is not the way that the day-to-day -day sync of data dual write works. This is only how it works when you do the initial sync in this case. Uh, one important thing to understand here, here is that if you use initial sync and you have done a change in FNO on the on the CSV file format, for instance, then uh, that will actually break initial sync. So um, be careful about that. It, it will break things. <laughs> um, there are a lot of dependencies when you do sync. So say that we want to set up a sync of customers, for instance, there are about 20 to 25 entities that you need to sync before you sync customers. You need to sync customer groups, you need to sync uh, modes of delivery, you need to sync a lot of other things that are dependencies for customers. So it's a bit 
tricky to think that you just need to sync customers and, and nothing else because that won't really work. <laughs> um, when you have customizations, uh, for instance, if you create new entities that are required to be synced and so on, that makes things a lot harder because you can't really leverage the, the entities that and, uh, and the mappings that Microsoft has set up. <coughs> yeah. Um, so so th take that into account when you're setting up uh, dual right. Um, try to use standard entities. Try to use uh, the things that, that Microsoft already has created. Uh, if you need to add a field here or there or a transformation rule, that's not really a big deal. It's, it's fairly easy. But if you have completely new entities that you have uh, created, that will actually make it a lot harder in that case. <laughs> uh, if you look at um, especially the global address book, the address structure in CRM and FNO are very different. In, in FNO, we have addresses and then we have purpose for that address. And that address is then linked to a customer. If you look in the in the uh, C side, we have uh, first address and second address, and those aren't really uh, in in the same way. Especially if we start using global address book in in FNO in a big way, that will make things even more tricky because then all of a sudden a vendor can also be a customer, which can also be. Uh, something else. So it is a bit complex how how uh, we on the FNO side uses it. But also um, it, it's important to understand that that in those cases where you heavily rely on on global address book, you will probably you need to have um, you will need to have the the mapping in place. But it, it's not mandatory. You can actually set it up without the global address book solution for for uh, dual dual right. <coughs> um. <coughs> so um, when you look at the dual right setup in um, in FNO, um, it's actually not in FNO. There is a there is a pane in FNO where you set up all of dual right, but that is actually just a, an an iframe that is taking a UI from Dataverse and putting it, putting it into FNO. Um, that that gets a bit tricky because things that you are allowed to do in FNO, you aren't allowed to do in this frame. Uh, for instance, if you if you have system admin permissions in FNO, you can't access this frame if you not also have system admin permissions on this on the uh, Dataverse side, because you're not allowed to get to this page. So <laughs> it is a bit tricky to have it within uh, within FNO. <coughs> uh, what I just need to say there is that I think the reason why it is this way is because um, the whole concept of legal entities that we have on the FNO side uh, is is not does not exist on the on the CRM side. So what happens when we create dual right mappings is that the concept of company is created on on the CE side, and on the CE side we will get a new, for instance, we will get a new table called companies. And all, uh, everything within CRM will get tagged with a company. Uh, the most, uh, the closest thing to a company that you have on the CRM side is a business unit, but it's not like a one-to-one. -one, uh, <clears throat> you you can't really compare it one-to-one -one because it it is a bit differently. You can see it as if you come from the CE side, a company is more like. Um, uh, a, a legal company, a, 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 like a legal company without our, within our business. So in that case, 
<laughs> uh, when you create custom mappings, you need to make sure that they are in uh, Dataverse solutions. So you, if you change a, a mapping, you need to add a provider to it and you need to add a version to it and then you need to bundle it into a solution because that's the only way that you can easily move the mappings between from dev to test to UAT to production. So you need to have a lifecycle management when it comes to um, uh, to the setup and to the to the maintenance of the Dataverse solutions. <laughs> uh, as I said before, sales and CE are actually the the platforms that are most affected in this, even though it's set up within um, FNO and it's mainly created. Um, for starters to be like a support system for for FNO. It's actually CE that are most affected of, of you implementing dual right because um, CE needs to have a lot of extra tables and fields and concepts and things uh, that that needs to be implemented there. <laughs> so <laughs> the future will uh, dual right eventually go away. Um, so I think one important part here is to look at how how we should look at the Dynamics platform. Um, Dynamics is not one application. It's actually two or more applications. But if we mainly separate them into what used to be AX and what used to be CRM, then it's basically two applications. And those two applications are um, very dissimilar. They're, they are not alike at all. They have uh, a lot of different requirements. I usually say that one of the main differences between uh, CRM and FNO is that on the FNO side, we have auditors. And auditors are very strict and very square when it comes to rules and regulations. So I don't really see there being a purpose of joining dynamics into one application. I rather like to see it as as a suite of applications. Think of it as as the Microsoft Office uh, suite, for instance, Excel and Outlook aren't the same application. They are just two applications that live together in the same application suite and that uh, has been built to work good together. So I see it as we need to make sure that we have good interoperability between the different Dynamics applications. And if we do, then we don't really need to make them into one. <laughs> so right now, Microsoft is working on something called One Dynamics One platform, which they have been working on for a while. Uh, this has basically four different main pillars, so to speak. It has to do with development, it has to do with administration, it has to do with user experience, and it has to do with, with analytics in this case. So <laughs> their approach is to sort of use the different functionality where it makes the most sense. So if there is something that we need to build into FNO, and that already exists on the CE side or on the Dataverse side, on the Power Platform side, we should probably build there instead of implement it um, again on the FNO side. And that sort of uh, talks to the fact that we are using functionality in Dataverse to create, for instance, event-driven applications in, in um, uh, finance and operations and so on. So. <laughs> um, so try to be opportunistic, try to use the same systems, the same application in, in different parts of, of the system. Uh, try to use the same tools in order to, to create and build things. The, the whole point is to eventually do everything from within Visual Studio in order to be able to deploy things in the same way, have the same ALM story, have the same plugins for uh, for the different applications. So if we look at the first uh, uh, part here, 
then it's it's called the the one admin experience. So on the FNO side, we have a we have a um, portal called um, LCS where we deploy and set up uh, finance and supply chain environments. That is eventually going away. Uh, we will start deploying environments within Power Platform Admin Center the same way where we deploy sales applications, marketing applications, power apps and so on. Um, they will still basically be the same application, but it will be admin administered and, and deployed from within Power Platform Admin Center, which is a good thing because Power Platform Admin Center has a fairly robust API, which means that we can automate a lot of the things that hasn't been able to be automated in, in, um, in FNO previously on the LCS side. <laughs> <laughs> we also have uh, fewer tools to understand. Uh, we we need to do less manual work, and and uh, we can use the admin capabilities that are already in uh, Power Platform. So this experience isn't available yet. It's in 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 a private preview at the moment. But it will be coming, and all of the environments for FNO will be moved into to the Power Platform fold, so to speak. <laughs> when we talk one user experience, uh, it is a bit jarring to jump between FNO and CE because those two platform doesn't doesn't very much look the same, uh, especially if you come into CRM and you get into like the admin experience UIs and things which are actually extremely old and and it's a it's a remnants from from a historical version of of CRM so making the UIs look the same and feel the same and work the same is also one of the big parts here but there is also another uh, issue here and that is to have an a user which is primarily working, for instance, in in um, finance and supply chain, get access to some um, forms or some pages from CRM, but within the FNO part. So not having to give that user uh, access to both platforms and not having to teach that user to use both of the platforms is also part of this. So being able to um, visualize CRM logic within FNO and FNO logic for within CRM is also a big part in this. Uh, and, and that's where uh, dual write comes in, for instance. Uh, <laughs> when it comes to development, oh, this one didn't look good. Uh, when it comes to development, <clears throat> we are on the FNO side today using um, Visual Studio to develop things, and we are using Azure DevOps to deploy solutions um, and, and packages to our environments. Um, <laughs> as I mentioned before, all of the environments are going into Power Platform Admin Center, and that means also the development environments, the one that we are using that are in, in Azure today, are also going into uh, Power Platform Admin Center uh, and being built a bit differently. So we are not no longer going to have Azure environments for developing uh, packages and solutions within a finance and supply chain. We will instead have something that is more like the tier two environments that we have today, meaning that we will run, we could potentially run um, Visual Studio on our own local uh, laptop connect to the service fabric layer uh, for the environment and deploy code that way. So instead of using Azure environments or local VHD, we will use our own laptop and the service fabric environment. But that also means that the environments for development, which be, will be exactly the same as the environment for UAT testing and, and testing and so on, which they are in today, which means that we will we will hopefully not get as many surprises when we deploy things to 
um, to that dev environment in that case. <laughs> um, that also means that we can deploy dev environments uh, automatically, so we will not have to spend as much time maintaining and, and preparing development environments. When it comes to analytics, we've already seen a lot of this in the Synapse links for Dataverse. So what Synapse, Synapse link does is that it uses virtual entities from Dataverse in order to expose data uh, from FNO and uh, push it into a data lake uh, where we can use the, the fabric analytics tools uh, to to get insights and to build reports and so on. And this is going to be more and more of the case that we are going to use this. Uh, <coughs> if we link it to Fabric today, we will also get the efficiency of Parquet for file format uh, with with uh, lower data volumes, better mm -hmm. performance, less compute and so on. <laughs> so that is also a big part in, in this whole one dynamics one platform uh, journey over to mm -hmm. to to dataverse sorry did anyone say anything oh, no no nothing 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 okay sorry <laughs> um <laughs> then we we have this one and this one is a fairly big big thing actually because i mentioned before the end to end business processes today that we have, um, those will create <coughs> those. Sorry, those will create flows between CR, CE and CRM, and make them more end-to-end uh, -end compatible, so to speak. Uh, but we will still not have like transactional integrity, and that is something that is coming eventually as well. That we will be able to create we will be able to treat the end-to-end -end process as an entire transaction so if some if someone goes wrong along the way we can actually roll the entire transaction back and and get to a consistent state we don't have to have um transactions that are are mid mid closing so to speak uh, which which also will will help us a lot uh, to, to get consistent data over both platforms. So, uh, do we have any questions? Uh, let me see if we have any questions. Mm -hmm. We don't... Uh, we don't have this kind of... Yeah, we don't have any questions, but uh, yeah. Yeah, we don't. So yeah, for me, as you mentioned, like FNO, and then how it, how you see in future with with the power platform as a um, like as as a part of itself. So yeah, again, like the people the people who are not working within this FNO, it's just FNO itself is a is a own world of itself. Which I would say, like this is you have to deal with. As you say, like you have like the those guys from the finance or from so they are kind of very cookie cutters. So they are look for the very detail, and you have to be make sure that's what you are presenting and what the data is there should be there, and it should be like watertight kind of. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So that's kind of very important. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think we don't have any questions. Yeah, but. It's it's a quite learning for me as well, even though I'm working on the power platform for years now. But FNO and then other bits and pieces, they are like they have their own like the world itself. Yeah, so so I'm I'm really sorry uh, if I I sort of turn to the wrong audience here because no 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 I, no, usu I usually I usually yeah. speak to like FNO people, which means yeah. that that the whole point of my session is to get them to understand the CE side. Mm. But I realized when I talked here that I probably need to do the same thing the other way around, because I think one of the pro big problems with the whole integration part between CE yes. and FNO is that 
the C people understand CE and the exactly. FNO people understand FNO. And exactly. there is not really anyone that understands enough of the other yes. side yes. to understand the big picture exactly. here. Exactly. It, because there, there are big differences and you need to take those into account. Mm. <laughs> so uh, one thing that I I um, uh, I would like to finish off with here. I yeah. have some some final thoughts if there aren't anything else. Uh, so when we do FNO uh, projects normally, when we implement FNO for a customer, mm. what we usually do is that we don't migrate anything. Uh, we, we, we set up a new environment. Mm. We basically evaluate what, what customizations is going to make it over to the new one. And then we build them again. And then mm -hmm. of course we migrate data, of course, but we don't migrate any code. We don't upgrade any code. We basically build a new system from scratch to make it, to simplify the, the, this, the way we do it. And we decide if things are going to stay in the environment or not. And so one of the things that I have <laughs> started realizing is that when we do an FNO project where CRM is involved, maybe we should do the same thing with CRM. So maybe we should set up a new FNO environment with a new empty CRM environment and basically do the same implementation uh, way of working with CRM as well. So we create a new environment, we move, we re-implement CRM, so to speak, because then we do it with the integrations in mind and not as an afterthought, because that is usually what happens when we do an implementation afterwards. <laughs> um, yep, yeah, we are this way. Install CRM. Um, mm. Maybe we should try to install CRM in the provisioned uh, Power Platform because then it's already connected and it's already in the right place. Um, we should decide and figure if we are going to use dedicated uh, entities or tables rather than the ones out of the box. Uh, the reason for this is that from the FNO side, a lot of the entities are fairly complex. They con contain a lot of data which aren't necessarily needs to be there. Uh, they also contain a lot of logic that is being executed when we access the entity, meaning that maybe we shouldn't have uh, the standard entities, but that will require us to rebuild the mappings as well. But we need to figure that out. <laughs> uh, in cases where we don't actually need to move data between the two environments, we could use something called virtual entities instead, which makes us, which which helps us expose data from uh, from FNO in CRM, but it's never being moved. It's only being visualized within CRM. So maybe that is a solution that makes things a bit less complex. So that was actually everything from my end. That's, that's a wonderful session, Joao. 